So today we are going to be talking about systems of inequalities. And I told you that there'd be times that graphing came back up again. And so we're not going to be able to solve systems today by graphing unless we can remember all of our graphing rules. And since we kind of hit our first hiccup when it came to graphing, I want to take a couple minutes here and just really make sure we're solid on how we graph and remembering those rules. So just a few basic reminders, right? If we look at the equation, y equals 2x minus 1, okay? We would say that this is in slope-intercept form, which means we can find a slope, which we represent with m, and a y-intercept, which we represent with b. So our slope here is going to equal 2. Our y-intercept is going to equal negative 1. Which of these do we want to plot first? We definitely have to plot our y-intercept first or our b first, and that goes on our y-axis. Okay, so I'm going to plot negative 1 on my y-axis. Once I plot that, I then want to count according to my slope. So what is my slope telling me to do? Right, this is really a fraction. We always want to think of slope as a fraction. So we're going to go up to right 1. Now, this is going to be really important today when we're graphing. We want to make sure we're getting a nice, neat, perfect line all the way across the graph. So we've talked about how we can go up to right one. We've also talked about how we can go in reverse order. We just kind of need to make sure we're getting enough points to get a nice neat line. And you guys are going to be happy that you can do this with technology today. So it's going to do the majority of that plotting for you. Okay, so let's look at this next example here. Y equals 3 minus 1 fourth X. What does m equal or our slope equal in this problem? We should have picked negative one fourth because even though the slope isn't first, right? The slope is always what goes in front of the x. We could rewrite it in this format. So what will our b equal? Our b is then positive three. So if we go to graph this, right? We are going to start at positive three. Now, this is just one negative, so a negative one over a positive four, right? So we are going to go down one, right four. And we've mentioned this before, but negative slope always does what? Right, negative slope always goes downhill. So we better make sure we have a line that's going downhill if we have a negative slope. Now, again, I can count both directions to make sure... I'm getting a nice neat line. Okay, well, I kind of have spots everywhere and I missed the points, but just pretend. Okay, so let's look at number three here. Y equals negative three X. What does our slope equal? Our slope is negative three. What does our Y intercept equal? Our Y intercept here is zero, right? This really says plus zero. So we're gonna start at zero and then we are gonna go down three, right one, right? So I'm just trying to get some of these reminders back in your head. It's gonna be really important today that we remember how to graph these. So here are your choices then. When we look at problems like number four or number five, I'm gonna skip four, I'm gonna to go to five just because we don't need to do two of them. When we look at problems like four and like five, right? Yes, it is in standard form. The problem is that for example, on this one, right, if we were to do standard form and cover up and divide, we would get an x-intercept that's a fraction, and we do not want any approximating. So here we're going to have to solve for y. So if I solve this for y, right, I told you solving for y was not going away. It comes up every unit all the time. That's a y. Okay, and then we're going to divide by negative 3 in all three places. So we'd have y equals two negatives make a positive. And then again, two negatives make a positive. And we'd graph that just like normal. Again, we're not going to graph every single problem here, just making sure we get these back in our brains. Number six, y equals negative two. Which way does this line go when we graph it? When we look at this and y is negative two, it means we are at negative two on the y-axis and it is a horizontal line. If you do not know that yet, commit it to memory. 
So x equals 4 should be what type of line? This should be a vertical line at 4 on the x-axis. So all those rules are then going to carry over into what we're looking at today, which is solving systems by graphing. So the first thing we need to know is what the heck is a system? Okay, so when we are talking about a system, we are talking about something that has two equations and two variables. Now, whether or not both equations have both variables is, that's not a requirement, but somehow between the two equations, we are also going to have two variables. And when we are solving a system, we are looking for the X and Y value or whatever the two letters are, it's almost always X and Y. So the X and Y value that make both equations true. Okay, and that's going to have to happen at the same time. Okay, so we are looking for an X and Y that's making two equations true at the same time. So we are going to be talking about three ways to solve systems, but you don't need to write this down right now, especially since you don't have a photocopy. The first way is solving by graphing, which is what we're looking at today. Then we're going to go into solving systems um, by substitution, and then finally by elimination. Okay, so if we are solving systems by graphing today, we are going to be taking two lines and graphing them on the exact same coordinate plane, which means we have three possible things that can happen when we graph those two lines. Option one is we can graph two lines and they can intersect. Okay, option two is that we can graph two lines and they can be parallel. Now, if I put in the third option here and I ask my students to guess, most of the time they're gonna guess perpendicular, but perpendicular is really intersecting lines. So it's not perpendicular here. Our third option is actually that they are the same line, that they fall right on top of each other. They lie right on top of the same spot. Okay, so we really need to recall in our brains. I pushed this hard when we were talking about graphing. If I graph a line, just like we were on this other worksheet, so let me pull that back up actually. Okay, if we are graphing a line, no matter what it is, what does this line represent, right? And we were saying over and over that it's all the X and Y values that make that function true, okay? So there's an infinite number of X and Y values that make that function true. But now if I graph two and I grab a second line on it, like maybe I graph my X equals four on here, the blue line represents where all of the y equals negative 2 is true. And the red line represents everywhere the x equals 4 is true. So where are they both true at the same time? And they're both true at the same time where they overlap. So that's exactly what we're going to be trying to find today. Okay, so when we look at the three options that we had, if we get intersecting lines, we're going to have one solution. Sorry, let's make that smaller. Okay, we're going to have one solution, and it's going to be the intersection point. And we're just going to name that point. Ah, can't write apparently. Okay. Option two is that when we graph, we get two parallel lines. So how often do parallel lines intersect? Right, never. Parallel lines don't touch. So this is going to have no solutions. And if we graph two lines that are right on top of each other, so if I have this blue line over here and then I graph a green line on top of it, how often do those lines intersect? Well, all the time. 
right? So how many times or how many solutions does a line have? We've said this a lot. It has infinitely many solutions. Now you can abbreviate this with just IMS. Now we don't want to say all solutions because points that are off the line, like here or here or here, right? Those are not solutions. It's only on the line. So there's too many for us to list, but not every solution we can possibly think of. So let's look at an example. Here's the deal, guys. As long as you can graph, you can solve these. So let's say we have y equals 2x minus 1 and y equals negative x plus 5, right? We have two equations and we have two variables. So this is a system. But we are going to break this down so that we are only looking at one equation at a time. So I'm going to focus on that y equals 2x minus 1 and I'm going to graph it by our normal graphing rules. So my m equals 2 and my b equals negative one. So I'm gonna go down to negative one, and then I'm gonna do a slope of up two over one. Now I wanna make sure I'm getting a nice neat line, so since I'm hand drawing it, I'm gonna have to write these points in here because I can't really actually make a perfect line. Even if I had a ruler, I might kinda of get off at the right angle, so those points are gonna be important. Okay, then once I've graphed that, I'm just going to go back to my system, and now I'm going to look at the other equation. And I'm going to pretend that that purple line was never graphed. <coughs> okay, and now I'm going to graph y equals negative x plus 5. So that tells me that my m is negative 1, and my b is 5. So I'm going to start at 5. And then my slope is going to be right negative 1 over 1. So I'm going to go down 1, right 1. Now this time it's not going to be as important that we get every single point. We just want to find enough points until they overlap. So I already have found where those two overlap, right? And they overlap right here. So my solution is then going to be to name that point. So this is the point, right, counting from the origin over 2, up 3. So my solution is 2, comma, 3. That tells me that when x equals 2 and when y equals 3, right, an ordered pair is x, comma, y, that both of these equations would be true. And I can even plug it in and check, right? If I plug 2 in for x, 2 times 2 is 4, minus 1 is 3. 3. And if I plug 2 in for x down here, negative 2 plus 5 is 3. And so I get true statements for both of them. So let's look at the next one here. y equals 1 third x minus 3 and x minus 3y equals negative 6. So if I look at my first equation, this tells me that I want to start where? Yep, I want to start by plotting my negative 3. And then I'm going to do a slope of 1 third. So up 1, right 3. Up 1, right 3. I'm just going to make several good points. My students always ask me how many. I don't have an answer. You need to make enough. Okay, enough that we can figure out where they intersect. Now we're going to look at the second one. And again, we could graph this in standard form. This one isn't going to give us a fraction intercept, so we could go that route. We just might not be able to get as many good points. For the majority of you, you guys seem to just keep solving for y no matter what, which I guess is great that you're really good at solving for y. So that's the route I'm going to go in this video. So we'll have a negative x minus 6. What number are we going to have for our slope on this one? This should be a positive one-third, right? There's really a one here, and those two negatives make a positive. A negative six minus three is a positive two. So I'm going to start at two, and then down one, right three. Down one, oh, positive, positive, just kidding. 
up one, right three, up one, right three. Okay, and what do we notice about these lines? Okay, other than my drawing is terrible, we should say that these lines are parallel. Okay, parallel lines have what types of slope? Parallel lines have same slope. So we even notice right here, these slopes are the same. Parallel lines never intersect. So our answer on this one is no solution. Okay, we're gonna look at one more. Y equals two X minus one and two Y equals four X minus two. So let's take a look at this first one, y equals 2x minus 1. We're going to start at negative 1 and then go up to right 1. Okay, I'm going to make enough points. Okay, so then we're going to look at our second equation here. What are we going to do for our second equation? Yeah, we need to solve this for y. Now, you could move that x over and then try and get it back in standard form. But for the majority of us, right, we're just going to solve for y. Now, I will point this out. Lots of you made this mistake on your functions test that when you went to solve this second one for y, you tried to do something with this x here. That x and y are already on opposite sides. So we don't need to touch that x. If we want to get y by itself, the only thing that's with it is a 2. So we're just going to divide by 2 everywhere. Well, that one tells us the same thing. So when I go to graph that, right, I'm right on top of it. If we get lines that are right on top of each other, what did we say the answer would be? Our answer here is IMS, infinite many solutions. Now recognize right? A point over here is not a solution. A point over here is not a solution. It has to be a point on the line to be a solution, right? Whether it's an exact point we made or anywhere in between, points on the line are all that matters. Now, you'll see down here on my screen, there's just this info with reminder on graphing, but I just went through with that with you beforehand.